In this video, we're going to focus on how to simplify radicals, including radicals with variables. We're going to also focus on how to add and subtract radicals, how to multiply radicals and divide them, including how to rationalize the denominator and when to multiply by the conjugate. So let's start with simplifying radicals. You need to know the perfect squares. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, 9 squared is 81, 10 squared is 100, 11 squared is 121, 12 squared is 144, we're going to go up to 20, 13 squared is 169, 14 squared is 196, 15 squared 225, 16 squared 256, 17 squared is 289, 18 squared is, um, that's 321, actually 324, excuse me, and uh, 19 squared is 361, 20 squared is, I'm going to put it here, 400. So let's say if you want to simplify the square root of 8, which of these perfect squares, which is the largest perfect square that goes into 8? It's 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So what you want to do is simplify root 8 as root 4 times root 2. And then you could take the square root of 4, which is 2. So your answer is 2 root 2. So let's try another example. Let's say if you want to simplify the square root of 18. Which number goes into 18? What's the highest perfect square that goes into 18? It's none other than 9. 18 divided by 9 is 2, so the square root of 18 is the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. And the square root of 9, we know it's 3. So this simplifies to 3 root 2. Now let's say if you want to simplify the square root of 50. 25 times 2 is 50, and 25 is a perfect square. So this simplifies to 5 root 2. So for the sake of practice, go ahead and try these examples. Try the square root of 27 the square root of 48, the square root of 128, the square root of 450, and the square root of, let's see, 98, and of 1200. So feel free to pause the video and try these problems. And then unpause it when you're ready. So let's start with the first one. What perfect square goes into 27? We know 9 goes into 27. 9 times 3 is 27. And the square root of 9 is 3. So this simplifies to 3 root 3. Now what's the highest perfect square that goes into 48? 4 goes into 48, but the same is true for 16. So if you start with the highest perfect square, it's going to make simplifying it a lot easier, especially when you're dealing with larger numbers. 48 divided by 16 is 3. So the square root of 16 is 4. So this simplifies to 4 root 3. What perfect square goes into 128? 128 is 64 times 2, and the square root of 64 is 8. Now what about 450? This is 225 times 2. And the square root of 225 is 15. And for root 49, I mean root 98, that's 49 times 2. And the square root of 49 is 7. Now what about 1200? What's the largest perfect square that goes into 1200? This would be 400. The square root of 400, well 3 times 400 is 1200. And the square root of 400 is 20, so you get 20 root 3. So that's how you can simplify perfect squares, or radicals that have, let's say, an even index number. If you don't see a number here, there's an invisible 2. Now what about simplifying cube roots? So you need to know your perfect cubes. We're going to go over the perfect cubes at least up to 10. So 1 to the 3rd is 1, 2 to the 3rd is 8, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, 3 cubed, or 3 times 3 times 3, is 27. 4 to the 3rd power is 64. 5 cubed is 125. 
6 cubed is 216. 7 cubed is 343. 8 cubed is 512. 9 cubed is 729. And 10 to the third is 1,000. 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. So let's say if you want to find the cube root of 16. What is the highest perfect cube that goes into 16? Well, it's none other than 8. 16 divided by 8 is 2. So you want to rewrite cube root of 16 as the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 2. And the cube root of 8 is 2 because 2 to the third power is 8. So this simplifies uh, to this answer. So go ahead and try these examples. The cube root of 54, the cube root of 192, and the cube root of 375. So 27 goes into 54. And 27 times 2 is 54. And the cube root of 27 is 3. So this is 3 cube root of 2. Now what number goes into 192? You can take each perfect cube and see which one is divisible by 192. And pick the largest of them. 8 goes into 192 and 64, but we're going to choose 64. Um, 60, 192 divided by 64 is 3, so when you split it, it's going to be 64 times 3. And the cube root of 64 is 4, so we get 4 cube root of 2. Here we have 375. Because there's a 5 in it, chances are it's divisible by 125. So 3, 1, 375 divided by 125 is 3 and the cube root of 125 is 5. Oh wait, this is, was supposed to be a 3. So that answer was supposed to be 4 cube root of 3. I don't know why I put 2. Maybe I got in the habit of writing 2's. Okay, try these two. The cube root of 1024 and the cube root of 5,000. So the largest perfect cube that goes into 1,024 is 512. 512 is half of 1,024. So we can rewrite this as 512 times 2. And the cube root of 512 is 8. So this simplifies to 8 cube root of 2. For this one, 5,000 is 1,000 times 5. And we know the cube root of 1,000, that's 10. So we get 10 cube root of 5. Now the next thing you need to know is the, um, the fourth powers. Let's say 1 to the fourth is 1, 2 to the fourth is 16, 3 to the fourth is 81, 4 to the fourth power is 256, 5 to the fourth power is 625, and 6 to the 4th power is 1296. So let's say if we have these three problems, the 4th root of 32, and the 4th root of 162, and the 4th root of 768. So feel free to pause the video and try these uh, practice problems. So which of these numbers go into 32? Clearly it has to be 16. 16 times 2 is 32. And we know the 4th root of 16 is 2. So we get 2 4th root of 2. And 81 goes into 162. So we have the 4th root of 81 times the 4th root of 2. And the 4th root of 81 is 3. So we get 3 times the 4th root of 2. Now which number goes into 768? Let's see. 768 divided by 81 it's a decimal answer, so that doesn't work. 768 divided by 256 is 3. So we can rewrite this as the 4th root of 256 times the 4th root of 3. The 4th root of 256 is 4. And that's the answer we get for that problem. Now let's add some variables to the, uh, to the mix. Let's say if we want to simplify the square root of 50, well before we use numbers, let's just keep it simple. How would you simplify the square root of x to the third? 
Now keep in mind, there's a 2 here. One way you can do this is you can split it to the square root of x squared times the square root of x. The square root of x squared is just x times root x. Now, depending on the level of, depending on the algebra course that you're taking, some teachers will want you to put an absolute value. If, if you have an even, um, like, index number, and if you get an odd exponent, some teachers may want you to put it in an absolute value. Other teachers, they may not focus on that concept, but depending on the course you take, I'm going to add the absolute value. Um, just so you know when to do so. So let's say if you have the square root of x to the 7. Here's another way you can do it. How many times does 2 go into 7? 2 goes into 7 3 times, so it's going to be x cubed, and then with 1 remaining, x to the 1. Another way to show your work is you can separate it as x to the 6 times the square root of x. Here, this is a 2. 6 divided by 2, you can rewrite that as x, 6 over 2, which is x to the third times root x. But I'm going to stick to one method. So let's say if you want to find the square root of x to the 9. How many times does 2 go into 9? 2 goes into 9 4 times with 1 remaining. So let's say if you have the cube root of x to the 13. How many times does 3 go into 13? 3 goes into 13 4 times with 1 remaining. But this time you got to put the 3. Let's say if you have the cube root of x to the 11. How many times does 3 go into 11? 3 goes into 11 3 times because 3 times 9, I mean 3 times 3 is 9. And the difference between 11 and 9 is 2. So 3 goes into 11 3 times with 2 remaining. So using what you know, go ahead and try these practice problems. Find the square root of x to the 5th, the cube root of x to the 17th, the 4th root of x to the 15th, and the 7th root of x to the 19th. So let's begin. How many times does 2 go into 5? 2 goes into 5 2 times, because 2 times 2 is 4. And 5 minus 4 is 1, so the remainder is 1. Now, how many times does 3 go into 17? 3 goes into 17 5 times. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 6 is 18, which is too much. So it goes into 17 5 times. And 17 minus 15 is 2, so we have 2 remaining. But we got to write the 3 here as the index number. How many times does 4 go into 15? 4 goes into 15 3 times. 4 times 3 is 12. And 15 minus 12 is 3. So the remainder is also 3. Now how many times does 7 go into 19? 7 goes into 19 2 times because 2 times 7 is 14. And 19 minus 14 is 5. Do you see the pattern? That's the quick way to get the answer. But remember, if you want to show your work, let's focus on this one. What you could have done is you can rewrite it as square root of x to the fourth times the square root of x. And 4 divided by 2 is 2, so you get x squared root x. Now for this example, what I would have done, if you want to show your work, I would split it to 15 and 2, the cube root of x to the 15 times the cube root of x squared. 15 plus 2 is 17. Um, but 3 goes into 15 5 times evenly, because 15 divided by 3 is 5. So that's how this turns out to be an x to the 5th, cube root x squared. For this one, I would break it into the 4th root of x to the 12th times the 4th root of x to the 3. 12 plus 3 is 15, but 4 goes into 12 evenly. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So then you'll get this answer. And for the last one, I would rewrite it as the 7th root of x to the 14th times the 7th root of x to the 5th. 14 divided by 7 is 2, so you get x squared times 
the seventh root of x to the fifth. So now, now that you understand how to simplify radicals when there's a variable inside, let's put everything together. Let's say if you want to find the square root of 50 x cubed y to the fifth, feel free to pause the video and go ahead and simplify it. So there's a 2 here. So I'm going to use the technique where we, we're going to separate the radicals and then simplify it. A perfect square that goes into 50 is 25. So 50, I'm going to write it as square root 25 times square root 2. And x cubed, I'm going to write it as the square root of x squared and the square root of x. y to the fifth, I'm going to write it as the square root of y to the fourth times the square root of y. So there's an divisible 2 here. So I had to separate the even values um, from these odd exponents. The square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of y to the fourth is y squared. Now, if you need to add parentheses, I probably didn't add it for some other examples, but if you want to add it here, you would add it to this one because it has a, an odd exponent. And then everything else that can't be simplified, collect it and put it inside a single radical. So the square root of 2xy. That's the answer for that example. So let's try another one. So let's say if you want to find the square root of 72x to the 4th, y to the 5th, z to the 6th. A perfect square that goes into 72 is 36. So we're going to write this as the square root of 36 times the square root of 2. So 2 goes to the 4 evenly, so I'm just going to rewrite it as the square root of x to the 4th. For y to the 5th, it's an odd number, so I'm going to write it as y to the 4th times y to the 1st. It adds up to 5. And then z to the 6th, I'm going to leave it alone. The square root of 36 is 6. The square root of x to the 4th is x squared. Because the exponent is even and not odd, we don't need an uh, absolute value. The square root of y to the 4th is y squared. And the square root of z to the 6th is z to the 3rd. So we have an even index, an odd result, so we're going to put this in an absolute value. Then every other term that wasn't simplified, in this case the 2 and the y, we're going to put it inside the, uh, the radical, so 2 times y. So that's the answer for that particular problem. So now let's try a cube root. So let's say if you want to simplify the cube root of 24 x to the 6, y to the 7th, z to the 10, r to the 13. So what perfect cube goes into 24? 8. So 24, we're going to rewrite it as the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 3. And 3 goes into 6 evenly, so we're just going to keep it like that. Cube root of x to the 6. 7 doesn't go into 6 evenly, but 6 does. So we're going to write it as the cube root of y to the 6 times the cube root of y to the 1st, because 6 plus 1 is 7. 3 doesn't go into 10 evenly, but 3 goes into 9. So I'm going to rewrite it as the cube root of z to the 9 times the cube root of z to the 1 and times let me add it here 3 goes into 12 not 13 so cube root of r12 times the cube root of r to the first 1 plus 12 is 13 okay let's simplify the radicals that can be simplified the cube root of 8 is 2 and here 6 divided by 3 is 2 so that turns out to be x squared if you have an odd e index, um, there's no absolute values that you have to write for this. Now this one, 6 divided by 3, that's also y squared. We could simplify this one. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And 12 divided by 3 is 4. So we get r to the fourth. Everything else is going to stay in the uh, cube root. So we have a 3. We have a y. We have a z and we have an r. 
And so this is the answer for that problem. So now let's try a fourth root. Let's say if we want to find the fourth root of 32x to the 7, y to the 12, z to the 15, r to the 20. So what number goes into 32? That's a, a fourth root. In this case, 16. So we're going to rewrite this as the fourth root of 16 and times the fourth root of 2. Now 4 doesn't go into 7. 4 goes into 4 and 4 plus 3 is 7 so we're going to write it as x to the fourth times x to the third. 4 goes into 12 so we're just going to rewrite it as as that. 4 doesn't go into 13. It goes The highest number that it goes closest to 15 is 12 so we're going to write it as z to the 12 times the fourth root of z to the third because 12 and 3 is 5. Now 4 does go into 20, so we're just going to leave this alone. So now let's simplify. The 4th root is 16. What number 4 times, what number um, times itself 4 times is 16? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16, so the 4th root of 16 is 2. Next, we could simplify this. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So we have an even exponent, I mean an even index number and an odd exponent, so we're going to put that in parentheses in, in uh, absolute value. The fourth root of y to the 12 is y to the third. And the fourth root of z to the 12 is z to the third. And the fourth root of r to the 20 is r to the fifth. So we can put this whole thing in an absolute value. So everything else, we're just going to collect it now inside one radical. So we have a 2, we have x cubed, and we have z to the third. And that's our answer. So now let's say if you get a problem that looks like this, 8 divided by radical 3, and you want to simplify it, what can you do? In a situation like this, all you can do is rationalize the denominator. So what you want to do is multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. So you're going to get 8 root 3 divided by root 9. 3 times 3 is 9. But the square root of 9 is 3. So this is the answer that you get. So let's say if you have 5 square root x, what would you do? Multiply top and bottom by root x. So you're going to get 5 root x times x. And that's it for that one. So let's say if you have 7 divided by the cube root of 4. So this is like 4 to the first power. What would you do in such a situation? Now notice this is what you can't do. You don't want to multiply top and bottom by the cube root of 4. The reason being is on the bottom you'll get the cube root of 16 and you can't really get rid of the radical because 16 is not a perfect cube. You could simplify it but you want to get rid of the radical. So instead you want to do something different. You see notice that there's a 3 here but you only have one 4 inside. You need two 4's to make to have a total of three fourths to get it out of the radical. So what you want to do is multiply top and bottom by the cube root of 4 squared. Because 4 to the first power times 4 squared is 4 cubed, which is 64. And the cube root of 64 is 4. So right now we have 7 times the cube root of, I guess in this part, 4 squared, we can write it as 16. And on the bottom, we have the cube root of 4 to the third. We can make that 64, but we don't need to. The 3's will cancel, and the radical will disappear, so we'll just get 4 on the bottom. Now, the cube root of 16, we can simplify that. Because 8 is a perfect cube. So we can break it down as the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 2. And the cube root of 8 is 2. So we can replace it with times 2 cube root of 2. 
and 2 divided by 4 we can simplify if we divide it backwards 4 divided by 2 is 2 so we will put that 2 on the bottom and so this is what you get that's the simplified answer for that problem so let's say if you have 9 divided by the fourth root of x to the first power so what you want to do is multiply top and bottom by the fourth root of x cubed because 1 plus 3 is 4 so you're going to get 9 fourth root of x cubed divided by the fourth root of 1 plus 3 is 4 so x to the 4 so these will cancel and then you'll get 9 fourth root of x to the third over x so that's how you can rationalize that denominator so now let's say if we have this problem 5 divided by the seventh root of x squared we need to get up to 7 so 2 plus 5 is 7 so we're going to multiply by the seventh root of x to the fifth top and bottom so this is going to be a final answer well not yet though but initially we're going to get the seventh root of x to the seven when those two numbers are the same the radical disappears and that's our answer try this one let's say if you have three divided by the ninth root of x squared y to the fourth z to the seventh how would you rationalize the denominator in such a situation? So what you want to do is multiply top and bottom by the ninth root of something. Now, you want all of the exponents to add up to 9. 9 minus 2 is 7, so you need x to the 7. 9 minus 4 is 5, so you need y to the 5. 9 minus 7 is 2. So these are the, the values that you need. So you're going to get 3 times the ninth root of x to the 7, y to the 5th, z squared, divided by the ninth root of x to the 9, y to the 9, z to the 9. So all of the 9's will cancel. So this is 3, ninth root of x to the 7th, y to the 5th, z squared, over x, y, z. So now you know how to rationalize denominators under any situation or circumstance that you might find yourself in. But what about this problem? <laughs> Let's say if you get this problem like on a test or something or in your homework assignment, um, what would you do to simplify it? If you see a radical separated by if there's a number and a radical separated by a plus or minus sign, multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. So since we have 4 minus root 3, the conjugate is 4 plus root 3. Change the minus to a plus. On the top, we're going to distribute the 15. 15 times 4 is 60, and 15 times root 3 is just 15 root 3. On the bottom, we're going to FOIL. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times root 3 is 4 root 3. And 4 times negative root 3 is negative 4 root 3. And negative root 3 times root 3 is like negative square root 9, which is just negative 3. Because initially you get this. 3 times 3 is 9. And then the square root of 9 is 3. So you get negative 3. So notice that the two middle terms will always cancel every time you multiply by the conjugate. So what we now have is 60 plus 15 root 3 divided by 16 minus 3, which is 13. So that's how you simplify it. So for the sake of practice, try this one. 10 divided by root 5 plus root 2. So what we need to do is multiply top and bottom by the radical, I mean the conjugate of the bottom. So
So on the top, we're going to distribute the 10. So it's going to be uh, 10 root 5 minus 10 root 2. On the bottom, we're going to FOIL. Root 5 times root 5 is just 5. Now we know the two middle terms will cancel. So we'll just multiply the last two. So root 2 times root 2 is just 2. It might be better to keep it in this factored form. We'll rewrite it like this. And then 5 minus 2 is 3. So that's our answer. Okay, try this one. 3 minus root 2 divided by 5 plus root 2. So once again, let's multiply top and bottom by the conjugate, not of the numerator, but of the denominator, because we want to get rid of all radicals in the denominator. So if we FOIA the numerator, 3 times 5 is 15, and 3 times radical 2 is negative 3 radical 2. Here, 5 times root 2 is negative 5 root 2. And the two negative signs will cancel. Root 2 times root 2 is just 2. On the bottom, notice that they're conjugates of each other. So the two, the two middle terms will cancel. So 5 times 5 is 25. And uh, root 2 times negative root 2 is just minus 2. So let's combine like terms. 15 plus 2 is 17. And negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8 root 2. And on the bottom, what we have is 23. So that's our answer for that problem. So next, we're going to go over adding and subtracting radicals. So let's say if you have a problem that looks like this. 3 square root of 18 minus 4 root 50 minus 5 root 32. How would you simplify it? So, first, let's break down the radicals into perfect squares. A perfect square that goes into 18 is 9. So, radical 18, I'm going to rewrite it as radical 9 times radical 2. A perfect square that goes into 50 is 25. So, that's 25 and 2. And a perfect square that goes into 32 is 16. And 32 divided by 16 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3. And the square root of 25 is 5. And the square root of 16 is 4. So 3 times 3 is 9 uh, square root 2. And 4 times 5 is 20 times the square root of 2. And 5 times 4 is also 20 square root 2. So at this point, we can add the exponents. This situation is similar to, let's say if you have like 9x plus 5x. You add 9 plus 5, you get 14, and you keep the variable the same. Imagine the square root as an x. When you add the coefficients, the square root is going to remain the same. So 9 minus 20 is negative 11, and negative 11 minus 20 is negative 31. So it's negative 31 square root 2. Let's try another example like this, but one involving cube roots. So let's say if you have 12 times the cube root of 16 minus 2 times the cube root of 54 plus 5 times the cube root of 128. Go ahead and try this problem and feel free to simplify it when you're ready. So what perfect cube goes into 16? 8 is a perfect cube, so we're going to rewrite it as cube root of 8 times the cube root of 2. And for the other one, 27 is a perfect cube that goes into 54. And 54 divided by 27 is 2. And 64 goes into 128, so this is what we now have. So what is the cube root of 8? What times what times what is 8? 2. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Now what about the cube root of 27? What times what times what is 27? The cube root of 27 is 3. 3 to the third power is 27. So this is why you need to know your perfect squares, your perfect cubes, and some of the, uh, the fourth power ones. 
the cube root of 64 is 4. And so now we can uh, multiply and then simplify. 12 times 2 is 24. So we have 24 cube root of 2. 2 times 3 is 6. And 5 times 4 is 20. So now what we're going to do is combine the uh, coefficients. 24 minus 6 is 18, and 18 plus 20 is uh, 38. So we have 38 cube root of 2. That's the answer. So now you know how to add and subtract radicals. So next, we're going to go over like how to multiply radicals. So let's say if you have the square root of 5 times the square root of 6. This is just the square root of 30. And we can't reduce the square root of 30 because there's no perfect square except one that goes into the square root of 30. So that's all we can do for that problem. But now let's say if you have this one, the square root of 12 times the square root of 32. How would you do this problem without a calculator? Would you multiply 12 and 32? Now you could do that, and you might get a huge number that could be like 300 or 400. And you're going to have to simplify that large number. Or you could make your life easier and simplify it before you multiply it. What perfect square goes into 12? 4. So break down the square root of 12 um, as 4 times 3. And what perfect square goes into 32? 6. I mean, not 6, but 16. 32 is 16 times 2. And then now you want to simplify it. The square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of 16 is 4. So now what you want to do is multiply the 2 and the 4, the numbers on the outside. That's going to give you 8 times the numbers that are inside the radical. 2 times 3 is 6. And this is your answer. It's much easier if you simplify first before you multiply. So let's try another example. Let's say if you want to simplify or multiply 5 root 20 by 7 root 18. So don't multiply 20 by 18 yet. Simplify it first. So a perfect square that goes into 20 is 4. So 4 times 5 is 20. And a perfect square that goes into 18 is 9 and 2. Well, 9 is the perfect square. But 18 divided by 9 is 2. So now let's simplify the radicals that we can simplify. The square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of 9 is 3. So now let's multiply these two numbers and those two. 5 times 2 is 10. And 7 times 3 is 21. Now what's 10 times 21? 10 times 21 is 210. You just got to add a 0. And 5 and 2 is 10. So we get 210 times the square root of 10. So what if you get a problem that looks like this? The square root of 3 over 5 times the square root of 5 over 7. How would you simplify it? So you could just multiply across. We can't really simplify 3 and 5. They're not perfect squares. So we can combine this into a single radical. What we have is 3 times 5 divided by 5 times 7. We can cancel the 5s. 5 divided by 5 is 1. So our final answer is just... Well, right now we have the square root of 3 over 7, which is the same as root 3 divided by root 7. Now, most teachers, they want you to rationalize it. So we're going to multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 7. So we're going to get root 21 over 7. And that's our answer. So let's continue. So let's say if you have this problem, the square root of 8 divided by 27 times the square root of 30 divided by 12. So instead of multiplying by 8 and 30, let's simplify. Let's see what we can cancel. So 30, on top we have 8 times 30. But 30, you can break it down into 10 and 3. And 10 is 5 times 2, and then times 3. So 5 times 2 is 10, 10 times 3 is 30. So 30 is 5 times 2 times 3. 
8, we can break that down into 4 times 2. 27, we can break that down to 3 times 3 times 3. That's 27. And 12, we can break it into 4 times 3. So you want to simplify first. So we can cancel a 4, and we can cancel one of the 3s. So what we're left with is the square root of 2 times 5 times 2, which is like just the square root of 20. And on the bottom, we still have the square root of 27. So a perfect square that goes into 20 is 4. So we have square root 4 times the square root of 5. Because 20 divided by 4 is 5. As we can see here, these 2's, they make the 4. And here's the remaining 5. And a perfect square that goes into 27 is 9. 27 divided by 9 is 3. So the square root of 4 is 2, so we have 2 root 5 on top. And the square root of 9 is 3, so we have 3 root 3. But we have to rationalize it. So we're going to multiply the top and bottom by root 3. So on the top, we have 2 times root 15. 5 times 3 is 15. And 3 times the square root 3 times the square root of 3 is square root of 9, which becomes 3. So our final answer is 2 root 15 divided by 9. So now let's say if you have a problem that just looks like this. The square root of 25 divided by the square root of 36. What's the answer? For this one, simplify it one step at a time. The square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 36 is 6. And that's all you got to do for that one. Now what about this one? The square root of 200 divided by 12. So before we... Uh, we try to like simplify the radical. Let's divide first. We could break down. We can divide both numbers by 2. Let's simplify the fraction. 200 divided by 2 is 100. And 12 divided by 2 is 6. Now notice that we could take the square root of 100. The square root of 100 is 10. And then we can multiply top and bottom by root 6. So you get 10 root 6 over 6. And you can reduce that further. You can divide 10 by 2 and 6 by 2. So you get 5 root 6 divided by 3. And that's the answer for that one. Now what about this example? The square root of 40 over 55. Notice that 40 and 55 are divisible by 5. So let's divide by 5 first. So we get the square root of 8 over the square root of 11. Now radical 8 we can write that as square root of 4 times square root of 2 because 4 is a perfect square. And on the bottom we have the square root of 11. So the square root of 4 is just 2. And then we got to rationalize it. So let's multiply top and bottom by root 11. So 2 times 11 is 22. And this is our answer. Try this example. The square root of 18 x to the 7, y squared, divided by 48, x to the 3rd, y to the 5th. So there's many ways we can do this. We can divide first, or we can simplify the radical first. What would you do? For this example, let's divide first. Let's divide the coefficients by 2. So we're going to get 18 divided by 2 is 9. 48 divided by 2 is 24. And now let's simplify the, uh, the exponents. When you divide exponents, like x to the 7 divided by x to the 3rd, you have to subtract. 7 minus 3 is 4. So we get x to the 4th on top. Now y squared divided by y to the 5th, that's 2 minus 5, which is negative 3 on top. But you can move it back to the bottom. But as you do so, you change the negative exponent to a, um, a positive exponent. So we have y to the third on the bottom. And we still have the square root. Now, those two smaller square roots is the same as if I wrote a largest square root. So you can write it either way. The square root of 9 is 3. And the square root of x to the fourth, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So you just get x squared. Now for the bottom part, 
24, we can break that down into 4 times 6 because 4 is a perfect square. And y cubed, we can break that into square root y squared times the square root of y. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of y squared is just y. And then what's left over is the 6 and the y, which is just root 6y. So now we're going to rationalize it. We're going to multiply top and bottom by root 6y. So on top, we're going to get 3x squared root 6y. On the bottom, we have 2y times 6y. So our final answer is 3x squared root 6y over 12y squared. Actually, we could reduce that. 12 divided by 3. If you divide it backwards, you get 4. So this is going to be a 4 on the bottom, 4y squared. And on top, x squared root 6y. Okay, now that's the final answer. So our final example for this video is going to be this problem. The square root of 75 times x to the 8 y cubed over 108 x squared y to the 7th. So let's simplify the radical first before dividing this time. Let's do it differently. 75, we can break that down into 25 and 3. 2 divided by 8, or I mean 8 divided by 2 is, in this case, x to the 4th. And 2 goes into 3 one time, so we got y to the 1st. And there's 1 remaining, so that's going to stay inside the radical. Now, 108, 36 goes into 108. 108 divided by um, 36 is 3. So we can rewrite the square root of 108 times the square root of 36. I mean, the square root of 36 times the square root of 3. 2 goes into 2 one time, so we just get x to the first. 2 goes into 7 three times, with 1 remaining. So these cancel, and the 3's cancel, so they just disappear. The square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 36 is 6. Now, x to the fourth divided by x to the first, you subtract 4 minus 1, you get x to the third. And here, if you subtract it backwards, 3 minus 1 is 2, but that has to go on the bottom. That's another technique of simplifying those types of uh, problems. So this is our final answer. 5x cubed divided by 6y squared. So that's really it for this video. I mean, we covered everything, or at least most topics. We've actually there's only one other thing I want to mention. Let's say if you have the square root of a negative number. Now, this is not a real solution. This is an imaginary solution. The square, you can write this as a square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of negative 1 is i. So let's say if you have the square root of negative 8. A perfect square that goes into 8 is 4. So you have 4 times 2 times the square root of negative 1. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of negative 1 is i. So you get that answer. So now I believe we've covered every topic relating to radicals. You know how to add and subtract radicals. You know how to multiply and divide radicals. You know how to simplify. You know how to rationalize. And if you see any negative numbers inside, you don't get a real solution, but you could write it as an imaginary solution. Just keep in mind, i is the square root of negative 1. i squared is negative 1. i cubed is negative i, and i to the fourth is 1, if that becomes relevant sometime in the future. There's actually another example that I almost forgot to go over, but is pretty relevant to this video. So let's say if you have the cube root of x to the 7, and you wish to multiply it by the fifth root, of x to the third. How would you do it? Now, let's say if you have the square root of 5, and if you want to multiply it by the square root of 6. 5 times 6 is 30, and it seems pretty straightforward. But the only reason why we can do that is because the index number is the same. So let's say if you want to multiply the square root of x cubed times x to the fifth. x cubed times x to the fifth is x to the eighth. You just got to add the exponents, and that reduces to x to the fourth only because the index numbers are the same are we allowed to multiply by what's inside. But in this scenario, the index numbers are different. 
So we can't just say x times 7, I mean x to the 7 times x cubed and write x to the 10. Because what index number would you write? 3, 4, 5, or something else? So then how do we simplify a problem like this when the index numbers are different? What do we do? What you need to do is convert it from its radical form to its exponential form. The cube root of x to the 7 is the same as x to the 7 thirds. And the fifth root of x cubed is the same as x raised to the 3 over 5. This number becomes the numerator. And this number becomes the uh, denominator. Now, when you multiply two variables, let's say like x squared times x cubed, what you have to do is add the exponents. 2 plus 3 is 5. So here, we have the same base, which is x. So to multiply these two variables, we have to add 7 over 3 plus 3 over 5. And the only way to do that is to get common denominators. So I'm going to multiply this side by 3 over 3, and the other fraction by 5 over 5. So what we now have is uh, 35 over 15 plus 9 over 15. So this is x, 35 over 15, times x, 9 over 15. Now that we have the same denominator, we can add the numerators. Um, 9 plus 35 is 44. So this is x raised to the 44 over 15. Now you want to simplify it. How many times does 15 go into 44? 15 goes into 44 two times. 30 is 15. 30 is divisible by 15, so I'm going to write 44 over 15 as 30 over 15 times 14 over 15, because 30 plus 14 is 40, 44. 30 divided by 15 is 2, and the last one we can't simplify it, so we can rewrite it as the 15th root of x to the 14th. Now another way you could solve this problem is at this point you can convert it back to radical form which is 15th, the 15th root of x to the 44 and then simplify it using the techniques that we've covered in this video. How many times does 15 go into 44? It goes into it two times. 15 times 2 is 30 but 15 times 3 is 45 which is which exceeds 44. So 44 minus 30 is 14 and you end up getting the same answer. So let's try another example. So let's say if you have the fifth root of x to the fourth, and you wish to multiply it by the cube root of x to the eighth. Using what you know, feel free to pause the video and give this problem a shot. Go ahead and try it. So let's begin. Let's rewrite it as x to the four over five times x to the eight over three. And let's get common denominators. So we're going to multiply this fraction by three over three and this one by 5 over 5 because the common denominator is 15. So we're going to get 12 over 15 times 40 over 15. And 12 plus 40 is 52. So we have x 52 over 15, which is the same as the 15th root of x to the 52. Now how many times does uh, 15 go into 52? 15 goes into 52 at least 3 times because 15 times 3 is 45. 15 times 4 is too much, that's 60. So we're going to get x cubed and the remainder. Four, 52 minus 45 is 7, so there's 7 x uh, variables remaining. So this is our answer. So let's say if we have a number instead of a variable. Let's say if we wish to multiply the cube root of 16 times the square root of 12. Now what I would do is before you multiply I would simplify it to make your life easier. The cube root of 16 is the same as the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 2. And the cube root of 12, I mean the square root of 12 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. We could simplify these two because the cube root of 8 is a perfect cube, that's 2 and the square root of 4 is also 2. So what we really need to combine is these. 
the cube root of 2 times the square root of 3. So 2 times 2 is 4. Now, there is an invisible 1 that you don't see. This is 3 to the 1 and 2 to the 1. And here, if there's no index number, it's a 2. So what we now have is 2 to the 1 third times 3 to the 1 half. So we can only multiply the bases if the exponents are the same. So for example, let's say if you have 4 times 5 is 20. The reason being is because the exponents are the same. But you can't say 4 squared times 5 cubed is 20 because what exponent would you have? So that doesn't work. But let's say if you have 4 squared times 5 squared, that's equal to 20 squared because the exponents are identical. So you can only multiply the bases, the 4 and the 5, if the exponents are identical. And you can only add the exponents if the bases are identical. For example, 4 squared times 4 cubed is 4 to the 5th. So whenever you perform an operation, something has to remain the same while you change the other thing. Either the base has to be the same or the exponents. So right now, the bases are different. So to combine the 2 and 3, we got to make the exponents. Um, we have to get similar exponents. Let's see if that's possible. Actually, that, that's not possible. There's no way we can get the same exponents for this problem. Let's say if you were to get common denominators, this would be 2 over 6, and the other one would be uh, 3 over 6. 2 over 6 is the same as 1 third. 3 over 6 is 1 half. So, because the, let's say if you have 2 and 2 over 6 times 3 and 3 over 6, neither the exponents or the bases are identical. So we can't combine that. So our final answer is just 4 cube root of 2 times the square root of 3. We can't combine those. Now, let's say if we had this problem. The cube root of 2 times the square root of 2. This we can combine because the 2's are identical. So 2 to the 1 third times 2 to the 1 half. So the 1 third I'm going to multiply by 2 over 2, and the 1 half I'm going to multiply by 3 over 3. So this would be 2 raised to the 2 over 6 times 2 raised to the 1, the 3 over 6. So now we can add the exponents. So this is going to be 2 raised to the 5 over 6, which is the 6 root of 2 to the 5, or 2 to the 5th power. So only if the bases are the same can we multiply two radicals over a different index. So try this one. The cube root of 4 times the fifth root of 4. So we have 4 to the 1 third times 4. There's a 1 here. To the 1 fifth. So I'm going to multiply this one by 5 over 5 and this by 3 over 3. So we now have 4 raised to the 5 thirds times 4, I mean, not 5 thirds, but 4 raised to the 5 over 15 times 4 raised to the 3 over 15. 3 plus 5 is 8, so we get 4 to the 8 over 15, which is the 15th root of 4 to the 8th power. But it turns out we can actually simplify it further because 4 is equal to 2 squared. So we have the 15 root of 2 squared raised to the 8th power. Now, when you raise one exponent to another exponent, you need to multiply it. So 2 times 8 is 16. So this becomes the 15th root of 2 to the 16. And 15 does go into 16 at least once. So 1, 2 comes out. And the remainder is 1. So we get 2 times the 15th root of 2. That's the final answer for that problem. Now what about if we're dividing uh, two radicals with a different index? So let's say if you have the fourth root of x to the 9 divided by the cube root of x squared. How would you do this one? So first, let's convert it to uh, exponential form. This is x raised to the 9 over 4, and this is x raised to the 2 thirds. So now we need to get the uh, common denominators. 
So we're going to multiply this one by 3 over 3, and this by uh, 4 over 4. The common denominator between 4 and 3 is 12. So this is going to be 3 times 9 is 27, 3 times 4 is 12, and here we have 8 over 12. So now when you divide, you got to subtract the exponents. 27 minus 8 is um, 19. And the 12 is going to be the common denominator, so that stays the same. So now, we can put that back into radical form. So that's the 12th root of x to the 19th. So how many times does 12 go into 19? 12 goes into 19 one time, and there's 7 remaining. So we still need the 12th root here. So here we have an even index, an odd exponent. So it's the absolute value of x, 12th root of x to the 7th. Now what about this one? The cube root of 32 divided by the fourth root of 32. Let's simplify this one. So this is 32 to the one-third divided by 32 to the one-fourth. So the common denominator is 12. We're going to multiply this by 4 over 4 and this one by 3 over 4. So on top we have 32 raised to the 4 over 12 and 32 raised to the 3 over 12. 4 over 12 minus 3 over 12 is 1 over 12. So we get 32 to the 1 12. So that's basically the 12th root of 32. So that's the answer for that example. So now you know how to simplify radicals, um, um, especially if there's different index numbers. You know how to multiply or divide radicals with different index numbers. But by the way, make sure you understand that you can't really add or subtract radicals with different index numbers. Like the cube root of 2 plus the fourth root of 2, you can't simplify it if they're separated by addition or subtraction. 2 to the 1 third plus 2 to the 1 fourth. There's nothing you, you can really do here. It's like saying x cubed plus x to the fourth. You can't add them. You just leave them the way they are. So you can only simplify radicals with different index numbers if you're dealing with multiplication or division, not addition and subtraction. So that covers this video, and uh, thanks for watching, and have a great day.